Photoshop now comes with an amazing adjustment brush. Now it doesn't do anything that couldn't be done in the past. Obviously you can just apply an adjustment and then have a mask. But it just makes it a whole lot easier, a lot more flexible and also quite an interesting way of experimenting with all kinds of images. Now I've got something like this and here's another image here where I've just applied a very basic gradient map as well as a bit of threshold. So how can you use this? Let's start right at the beginning. So what do you have to do? Just go over here, select the brush tool, then go down to adjustment brush tool. And with that, you've now got this new brush. It's only come in in Photoshop 2024. So if you're looking at 2023, it's not there. Well, what you can do, just go along the control bar and you've got options such as adjustment. Now by default, it will go with the brightness one. Quite certain that brightness will be the one you probably get. If you haven't used the tool before, you will see brightness there first. You've got the option for minus, removing, and for adding. So let's just go with the adding. Let's just add one. And I'm just going to go with, to make it nice, colorful, gradient map. So gradient map. Now you can use, of course, your mouse. You can use your pen, art pad and pen. And you can use any brush as well. So you can say apply this. Very, I'm just applying it very rapidly, but you can see you can create a very lovely, colorful effect there. And of course, if you make a mistake, say, I oh, just go over here and, oh, just went down like that. Well, you can always just go over here and select the minus. So just then think, oh, let's just get rid of it. So it's very easy just to remove. And you can see again, I've gone the other way and I've added, you can change the size as well. So you might like, obviously, very fine tune. Just go down maybe 30 and just apply it like that. So you can get rid of that purple there. And of course, apply it like this. Obviously, I like to apply with a fairly large brush so you can cover the hair fairly quickly. But you can also, of course, just modify just subtle parts of it with a smaller brush. You can also, and I'm using the default soft round, but you can use any brush. Just go down here, say real oils, paint box, just select it. And as soon as you do that, you'll get a completely different design. And you can, of course, you don't have to apply it over the whole thing. You could apply it different parts, just like that. Maybe create a nice there, around the eye, and something like that. So a whole range of different options just by using different brushes. And of course you can create all kinds of brushes. Don't have to use just the ones you've got. You could, of course, capture a brush and then apply that as, of course, an adjustment brush. Well, once you've done that, you've got other options here as well. You can see there you've got the pressure ones there. You've also got choose an object. I just click there, you can see that. Now, personally, I'm not gonna use that, but you can see as you do that, it goes like that, just over the object. Clearly, there's nothing else in this other than obviously this woman. So just deselect that. And you can also add an overlay. So you can see the overlay where you've actually applied it. Personally, I don't see any use for that, but you might wanna have that, so click there. Now you can also change the opacity, so you can reduce it down and then apply it again. And as you can see what happens then. Now, obviously it's all applied to the same adjustment, the same adjustment layer. But you can now, obviously the brush is reduced down so the effect is more subtle. It's only in that area. And you can see the result if you can see it very in the actual little image there. It's just subtle changes, maybe slight different gray, slight obviously instead of black or white, etc. Just click there, I'm just gonna go with 100%. And also you can modify the flow. Now it's a pity, and I am really disappointed that they didn't add it. I would have loved to see some symmetry effects. Can't see any reason why you couldn't have had symmetry with this. It'd be lovely to apply in different places to create some really, truly weird visual effects. Still, it's not there. So this is all we got at the moment. Well, I've applied it. Suddenly you think, oh, I don't want that. So what you can do, go over to Properties. If you can't see the Properties panel, that's in Window and Properties. And then you can go over here and you can change it. You might decide, you know what, I want that sort of garish, red, orange, all those sort of colours. Just change it very quickly or blue. Some will work better than others. And you can go and say, select that one instead. Let's go with that one. Nice, colourful design like that. Well, what you can also do is you can go over here and it's a layer. 
So it's a layer. You can go here and blend modes. So you can go dark and multiply. Now, for some weird reason, the options are not up here, but of course, they're in the layers. So you can just change it here and run through, and you see, oh, you know what? Maybe difference works better, or overlay. And you, of course, can apply that just for the gradient map. Because the next thing you do is you can apply multiple adjustments. And that's where I think the real power comes, is you can now, you know what? I want to go with, say, something else. Maybe threshold. I want this central part, and let's use a different brush. So click there, and I'm just going to go back to the soft round. And I can just apply it. And you can see then I can say just like a nose or maybe just select that area. And again, just select maybe the lips. So I can just tweak that. And again, if you make a mistake, you might do something like that by accident. Or you might decide, you know what, well, that's good. Or if you don't, just go here. And then again, now this is applied just to that layer. So it doesn't change anything else. I can't go over that one and change that. You have to go back to it. So if you want to, you have to select that layer and then you can go over it. So it all works on the basis of the current layer that you're working with. And you've got two there now. And again, you can go exactly the same as before. Just go here, linear burn. You can run through and decide, you know what, that's more personal. You're just going to go with normal. Well, you can add more. So you can go over here and you can think, oh, let's go for color lookup. So color lookup and then just apply it. Now, you know something's happened. It's not working. You need to select this one and then go back here and then color look up. It does seem to have a slightly weird way of working like that. But say, select that. Now, if you apply it, let's just apply it, say, here. You can see it now creates it. And you can then apply that color look up. Now, I don't know what color look up it is, actually. Let's just go to it. Properties. Oh, film stock. Okay, so you decide, you know what, I want late sunset. So you can just apply a late sunset. Now, if you decide you can't have more than one on this here, so just apply that, and you might decide, I want another one of these. Now, you can't, you think, ah, oh, that's a bit weird. Well, you can duplicate it. So you can just go over here, layer, and you can go down here and duplicate layer. Click OK. So you've got a color look up there, Still got the properties, late sunset. This time, you can go here and you can go night from day. And you can see now it's applied. Obviously, because it was a duplicate, it's got the same one. So you're going to have to remove it. You can, of course, add new ones. I'm just, let's just remove that. So you can just quickly remove it. And then, again, go there. And with this color look up, I can decide, let's go for another one, tension green. One, I don't use that often, but I will go with Tension Green. And again, plus. And then you can apply Tension Green. And you can see it adds a green effect around the face. See, it's a, <laughs> adding more and more on top. It's just showing you you can use it in multiple ways. Now, you can, if you want, create another one without doing the duplicate. Simply deselect. And then go up to Color Lookup. You decide, I want to cut. Again, you've got no access there, but you can go back down to this one. Just select that, or I guess any of the others as well. As soon as you do that, you can then add. Seems a bit odd, but that's that's the way it works. And then you can add another effect there. Now, it's in the wrong position, but I don't want the color to look up there. Now, don't move it here. What you need to do is go here. Just go to there. So select that. And then drag up. And you can see as you do that, you'll notice it bars generated between it. And you can just drag it all the way up to the top. And now that color lookup is right at the top. So you've reordered it. And now it's in the place that you actually genuinely want it, right at the top. Slightly seems odd. There may be a better way of doing this. I'm certain that in the comments, people will turn around and say, oh, you can do it this way. It's quite possible. But that's certainly a very, fairly quick way. And again, once you've done that, once you've moved it up to the top, Again, you've got the properties there and you can change your mind. So you can decide to go for bleach bypass or whatever. And again, exact same, blend modes, darken, and you can try out different blendings as well. Now, of course, what you can also do is you can apply effects to them. So you've got this layer, go to filter, blur, and Gaussian blur. So Gaussian blur, you can just apply that Gaussian blur. Now. The blurring effect does mean it's hard to actually see the change. 
But you can see there, if you go to the layer, that mask has now been blurred. Now, any subsequent brush stroke you apply will be using still the same brush. So that hasn't changed anything. But you can go, say, here, let's just select threshold. So you've got the threshold. Go to filters. You can go down here to distort. And you can go to wave, say. And here, you can see there, you've got that mask. And just change that. Change the amplitude. And you can go like that and click OK. And you can see now the effect applied like that. I'm not going to keep that, but you could do that if you want to apply effects and modify it that way. Also, let's go and apply another effect. You can always go back at any time to this one and then go to Layer and go down to Smart Objects and Convert Smart Objects. Personally, I always prefer to keep them as Smart Objects. Maybe create a duplicate as well if you want to keep that, maybe hidden. And then go to Filter, and this time I'm going to blur the image. So blur the image. Now, maybe not that much, but say to about four or five. So four or five. And now you can see the image is there. Obviously, all these adjustments are still applied. Is that the same as before? You can set that, and you can go up here, and you can say Invert. So Invert, let's go for Invert. And I'm using Plus still. That's the key thing using plus, and I can apply that, and that invert will be applied like that to the image around there. And you can see, you can create literally millions and millions of different designs very quickly. All, of course, are still live, and you can always still simply go down here to layers and just delete it. You decide, you know what, I don't want that invert, the one I've just created. Nope, I can just delete it. Delete layer mask, yes, and again, delete the whole thing. So there it is, it's gone. And of course, you can manipulate any image and you can use any brush. So I've got all these brushes, got hundreds and hundreds of brushes. Every single one of these can be used. So you can create some really interesting, say, screen tones. So let's just go back to that one that's selected and I can go for, say, threshold again. And now I can apply that. So you can see then very quickly, you can create all kinds of modifications to an image using that half tone. And again, you can still go up here and change the blend modes and maybe go with that one instead or that and so on. Well, I hope you found this of interest. If you've got any questions about the adjustment brushes, please let me know in the comments below. Always great to hear from you. A like or dislike, always appreciated. Bye.